Hi, welcome to the Online Jewelry Academy. I'm John R. and I'm your instructor. Today I'm going to talk to you about dapping. Now, I've got over here a set of dapping punches that come with a dapping block. This was purchased from a local hardware store for not too much money. You can find these through jewelry supply companies and regular hardware stores. Sometimes, like this one, they're called doming blocks. But in the jewelry industry, we call it dapping. Now, it's a steel block that has several different concavities on all sides of the block. Now, sometimes they're sold as flat blocks where all the cavities are on one surface. Now, here I have a steel one and a hardwood one along with a set of dapping punches. Now, if you don't have enough money to buy a full set, you can buy the block and just a few punches to work your way through until you make a lot of money selling your jewelry and can afford the big set. Now, the difference between the steel block and the hardwood block is that the steel block makes deeper hemispherical shapes, whereas the hardwood block basically just makes a low cup shape. Now, to use this tool, you're going to need some kind of work hammer. You could use a brass mallet, or you can use a steel hammer. Either one's fine. But no matter the, what you choose to use, you're going to need to have some safety glasses. Now, safety glasses are important because anytime you strike a tool with a hammer, there's always the possibility that something could chip off the end of the tool and fly into your eye. If you haven't seen our safety video, now might be a good time to stop this video and check out the safety video before moving on. Okay, now, the number one secret to having success with your dapping block is you need to pick a dapping punch that allows for enough room to be in the cavity so that the tool can move freely and there's enough room for material to be in there along with it. Now, if you find one where there's only enough room for the dapping punch, you got the wrong size punch. And if it doesn't fit in all the way, all you're going to do is scar the surface of the dapping punch. Now, in terms of the hardwood block, you're probably just going to use the bigger punch most of the time anyway. And if you find the smallest opening on the hardwood block, you can see that the dapping punch fits right into it. So using this one a majority of the time is just fine. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to cut discs. And these discs should be pre-annealed and cleaned before you begin. Now, you can speed through the process, or if you want to be a little bit more careful, you can graduate from your biggest size all the way down to the size, smallest size that you're going to need. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this disc into one of the cavities, and then I'm selecting a punch that's obviously got plenty of room for itself and the material in the cavity. You center the punch on top of your disc and just give it a few wraps. Now, this begins the process of bending the, the disc into a dome. Now, if you get any of these little puckers, all you need to do is put the piece back inside the cavity, position the dapping punch directly on the pucker, and just give it a little tap. And I had two or three. And there you go. You can see how they're already kind of mended and blended into that surface. So if I want to make it even a more smaller surface, or smaller dome, I can go into a smaller concavity. Now, this is not the right punch. There's not enough room for this punch along with the material. So I would just move down to a smaller punch and do the process again. Again, if you see any puckers, just hit right on the pucker. And you can rock the material around within the dapping punch in order to get every square millimeter of the surface. Okay, that's enough of that one. But you can see it quickly turns that material into a dome form. Now, the hardwood block will work exactly the same way. And here I'm just going to speed up and go right to the biggest one with a disc that's of an appropriate size. If I just position my punch directly in the center, I can give it a few wraps. 
and it quickly domes the form. Again, if you have any ripples or puckers, just go back and rework them a little bit until they disappear. I hope these tips help you with your dapping projects. Thanks for watching and check out our other videos and products on the onlinejewelryacademy.com.